And uh, again, uh, the uh, JGB positiveness has been uh, playing through the markets uh, since the Fed uh, non-move. That's where all the money is going. Thanks, Rama. Well, let's stick around with debt markets here. Asia's sovereign debt market has succumbed to global market volatility in recent weeks. Some spreads are sitting at their widest level since February, but it's the worst over. We've got Joanna Chua, the vice president and sovereign credit analyst with Salomon Smith Barney, joining us now for more from Hong Kong. So, Joanna, what's the case for maintaining your defensive strategy across Asia? Hi. Um, I mean, we continue to see that despite what's going on in the rest of the uh, rest of the global markets, Asian sovereign spreads have actually been pretty resilient, except for the Philippines, which has been hit by Brazil-led concerns. If you look at some of the high-grade sovereign spreads, particularly China, Korea, and Malaysia, they have been relatively stable. Now, except for Korea, which had widened recently because now that it has been moved out of the emerging market index, I think in general we still see continued credit improvements across these three high-grade credits, and we still think that people are going to particularly be interested in a credit such as Malaysia as a safe haven play, especially now that other countries in emerging markets uh, have been a little bit more volatile. Well, another stable market out there that you just mentioned is China. How much more uh, buying activity are you going to see there? Well, Chinese bonds are really more technical rather than really driven by fundamentals. Um, in fact, a lot of it is really driven by the fact that there's a lot of dollar domestic liquidity, especially by Chinese banks onshore in China, and they are big buyers of credit, particularly also big buyers of China sovereign bonds. And given that we're not really seeing any new supply coming out of China, I think that these bonds will continue to remain very firm, and perhaps Chinese bonds are perhaps the most defensive credit. However, having said that, I think the upside is relatively more limited. So from a defensive strategy, our, our top pick continues to be Malaysia. And how should you play the Philippines? So you've just mentioned there the Brazilian problem. Well, I think in the, in the Philippines case, it has, been, it has held in relatively well. I think one of the things that is concerning us a little bit is the fact that I think the fiscal prospects are looking a little bit more uh, on the downside. In particular, there was news yesterday about uh, the government uh, hiking its 2003 budget higher for the second time, now up 142 billion pesos. I don't think that will cause a significantly dramatic uh, adverse reaction in the market, but certainly it does raise attention to the fact that Philippines continues to have fiscal problems and the ability to uh, rein in, rev uh, to continue to improve revenue collection is still something at large. So I think Philippines is something to watch, and it will be relatively more vulnerable, not only because it's perceived as relatively higher risk, but also because Philippines is a country that we expect will continue to tap the, bar uh, the offshore market for external borrowing requirements. I wanted to pick up on what you said about Korea. Its spreads are widening. How, how do you play a market like this one? Well, I really think Korea is starting to look like a, relative, a pretty good buy. I mean, the reason why it has widened, I mean, it has actually widened because it was upgraded, uh, because, uh, because certainly emerging market investors have had to unload their Korea, but the high-grade investors haven't really had the focus to come back in. But I do think that Korea is looking relatively more attractive where they are. We continue to, to continue to see strong economic performance out of Korea, and I think although pretty much the ratings have now all been a single A across all three rating agencies, we're probably not going to see any more upgrades at this point for now I think certainly because of these current spreads at 140 or over 140 150 basis points I think Korea is a good buy US Treasuries they've recently rallied are you expecting a similar rally here in the region um, I think, you know, certainly there's always, you know, we don't always exactly one for one follow sort of what's going on in the Treasury market. I think because certainly because interest rates are expected to go low, and I think at this point that doesn't have really, really significant impact on sort of the sovereign spreads in the region. Um, you know, Korea and Malaysia don't really have sort of significant or any material offshore borrowing requirements that we, we foresee at this point that they can benefit from the lower cost of borrowing offshore. I think Philippines will benefit from the fact that interest rates uh, the you know, U.S. interest rates and the global interest rates will go lower, which will help ease their borrowing requirements. But as long as they deal with their own domestic concerns and also not be susceptible to Brazilian risk, I think the, the borrowing cost in the Philippines will still remain uh, relatively uh, not as, right. as, as, attra as, as tight as we'd expect. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks, Joanna. Joanna Chua in Hong Kong, credit analyst with Salomon Smith Barney. Up next, we'll continue our week-long look at top holiday stocks here in Japan. Stay with us.
International Service, a single platform constructed with all elements that form the world of financial information. Without data, the service would not be the world leader it is, the most comprehensive, timely and accurate financial database available. With the ability to export into proprietary systems, Bloomberg provides the flexibility that our clients need. The Bloomberg Professional Service has become an integral way of understanding global financial markets. There is one broadcaster that continues to enhance the face of money news with a unique data screen. Their news panel reveals hundreds of reports, breaking news direct from over 80 bureaus. Moving the ticker with continuous real-time share price updates. Analyzed by experts in the context box. Thousands of evaluations, sectors, graphs, currency updates and financial trends. Which affect the world markets 24 hours a day. Created locally for 10 channels in over 100 countries in 7 languages. All this from one broadcaster in Money News. Bloomberg, the Bloomberg data screen, your window to the world of money. It's the middle of the holiday season here in Japan, but there are...